Guatemala. What is it about this country that people fall in love with? Is it the ever-beautiful Lake Atitlan? Or is it the violent volcano Fuego? We are continuing our journey to the farthest reaches of this amazing country with our Toyota and four-wheel camper. We're taking the road less traveled. Are you coming with us? started off with a blast as we celebrated in the city of Antigua in central Guatemala. We have been in Antigua for about four days now and the coolest thing about this place is that we can just park here for free at the police compound and when we got here the first night we were all alone but look at this now we made some friends from all over the world and uh, tonight is New Year's so we make sure we're gonna celebrate that. Our base camp for exploring this exciting country. Of course, we explored the city a bit too, between venturing out to see the rest of the country. Guatemala is vast compared to some of the countries in Central America, and has a much higher concentration of back roads as well. In the six weeks we spent here, I think it's fair to say we saw quite a few of them, but definitely not all. There's more than one way to see a country. Some ways we like to explore are by boat, pack raft specifically, and by hiking. Guatemala has some epic hikes and we are en route to one of them now. The roads full of sharp turns and steep inclines. Our heavy truck camper makes us a bit nervous some days on these roads, but has yet to fail us in over a year of traveling. So one of our first hikes in all of Guatemala, we're hiking up to the highest lagoon in all of Central America, the Laguna Seca de Ordenez. It's gonna be pretty intense as we haven't done a hike like this in a while, but let's get to this. Full of vigor, we set off on a hike that will keep us guessing. vertical for almost 800 meters. It takes us a few hours to get to the top plateau. All right, time for a big break because we're both pretty pooped. Uh, who else brings uh, hard-boiled eggs on, on their trips? Hopefully they're hard-boiled. <laughs> I think we'll find out soon. H2. There you go. Thank you. Both of them now, or? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, uh. Oh, they're not boiled. <laughs> they're not boiled. Great. Soft boiled eggs and an astounding view. And some serious wind to contend with. Feeling like we may have been a bit unprepared for this hike, we know we are almost at the end. Regardless of the weather, we press on. Finally made it to the highest elevation laguna in all of Central America. Wow, it was a bit of a hike though. I'm sure there were other ways that were easier, but we decided on this way. Laguna Seca de Ordenez, the highest and most remote lake in Central America. Not another soul to be found anywhere near here. It might not be the season. It might be the weather, or it might be how we want to see a country. 
in great detail. However, not everything goes according to plan. What's going on here? Well, so this little lonely rubber bandy thing we had didn't last very long and my whole sole of my shoe came off. Oh, damn. <laughs> so I don't know what it looks like. Would it be doable for... Well, it's gonna have to be. You don't have much of a choice. Oh, I feel my feet do it. Just gotta be careful where you step. Shit. Real careful. Oh, and there were some slippery parts and everything there. Over a thousand meters lower than Ordinez, we are back on the back roads en route to what's next. Central Guatemala is full of amazing drives and views from its vast mountain ranges that never seem to end. Large towns seemingly appearing out of nowhere with many curiosities and unique points of interest. If you're looking for reasons to engage four-wheel drive, then you don't need to go very far for that, and often staying on the main road in rural Guatemala will have you doing that anyway. You'll notice quick that the locals don't have large vehicles. You'll soon notice after that that the roads are small and narrow, and if you have a large vehicle, you'll unfortunately notice that you won't fit in most places here. I had to put in four-wheel drive to get up here. Yeah, thank God it's dry because if it would be raining, this would not be possible. With myself watching one side and Lindsay watching the other, we make it through these narrow dirt roads just fine. And there is a truck coming. It's like he's backing up. Oh, thank God, he's backing up. No, it looks like there's a space here to pass. Okay. Careful, put his rock here on the Lucky for the small vehicles of the locals. In my opinion, I would be hesitant to even take a trailer behind a small vehicle. We definitely wouldn't make it to at least half of these places with one. We made it. I don't know if we can go any further than this. I don't know. Yeah, keep going. Alright. Whew. A little stressful, a little dusty. <laughs> That's, that's home for you definitely want to have a four-wheel drive small, maximum medium-sized truck to drive this. There's only four-wheel drive trucks here, so yeah. you ain't come up here in the van. Mm -mm. <sighs> Camping at Mirador Chiquibal tonight. It's a dormant volcano. We're on the top of it, and down there's the caldera, all just full of water. Pretty cool. Hopefully less clouds tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. We made it. We're down. Ooh, lots of stairs. Yeah, that that is. And this is the lake. Yeah. That is nice. Looks like we might have passed the last people to go up. Yeah. It took us less effort than the previous volcano lake we went to. <sighs> Chicobal is a very spiritual site where the locals come to make ceremonial fires and lay flowers for various reasons like remembering the dead. Another drive to a place with no other travelers. But this site is on Iovalander, so it is rather common. That doesn't take away from how interesting and unique it is, though. We take the saying, it's not the destination, it's the journey, to heart. If we were rushing through all of these places and countries, 
we would not have the chance to really have a genuine experience. Or get to see every volcano in this country. The next morning offers us a much better view of the landscape and of the exploding volcano. Guatemala keeps showing us why people choose this as their favorite Central American country. This is, however, an in and out track, so time to go to four wheel drive again and head down. We got up extra early this morning because we are climbing the Bacaya volcano and we want to get there before sunrise and also before all the crowds come. So yeah, we are still trying to wake up and we're going to head onto the trail right now. This happens once in a while. We are up before the sun even as a chance to say hello. Dogs everywhere, of course, and always love saying hello. The early morning fog still blocking the view of the nearby active volcano. We are here so early that the volcano store isn't even open. It's not open right now. They probably don't open at 6.30 <laughs> as what we are now. Yeah, but I wanted some lava rings. <laughs> lava rings. The hiking path through the volcanic rock is sometimes easy and sometimes difficult to find. The trail on our maps is useless as it keeps changing as the lava flow moves. We made some friends in Antigua and we're on this hike with them. No, not warm enough for that. Show it again. Okay. It's warm though, yeah. It's nice, yeah, like a little sauna. Tiny personal sauna for your arm. <laughs> Finally at the top, after having to find our own pathway through this land of fire and ash. So the summit of Bacaya is right behind me. I'm not gonna go up to the top as the main exit for the smoke and sulfur and everything that comes out of the volcano is kind of flowing right up to the top and I don't really wanna breathe that in. Um, but this is friggin' cool. Um, there's another opening right here for the volcano. No magma, we can't see anything, that's too bad. But we can see this amazing view. We have Guatemala City. Uh, over there, tons of mountain ranges. We can see for looks like hundreds of kilometers. It's absolutely insane. We are getting ready to climb Acatenango tomorrow. So we're gonna get out all of our stuff. It's been a while since we got our tents out, since we got our sleeping bags out. So let's see if that is still all intact. <laughs> it should be, it's been in here for quite a while. This hike to the best view in all of Guatemala will be our first overnight hike in a long time. So I've decided I'm taking the tent. Lindsay's taking the air mattress. We have a sleeping bag. Yeah. Sleeping bag cover, warm stuff, because it's going to be chilly at the top, whether we want it to or not. Almost zero degrees on some days. Three, four degrees. Yeah, it's true. So, toques. Toques. <laughs> Lots of stuff. Often people who fly in or otherwise don't have the gear can rent it all and with a guide, but that's clearly not our style. And leaving our base camp of Antigua, the winding mountain roads bless us with an amazing example of what's to come on the morrow. We've looked 
all over the place to find me new boots because of my sole that fell off. We couldn't really find any, so we had them fixed in Antigua and they are so beautifully done that I am actually convinced they will survive this volcano hike up on Acatenango, which is a two-day hike. So let's hope. And what I'm making is a, a custom three-in-one. Lindsay had a good idea um, as we both really enjoy coffee in the morning. It's not the greatest, it's just instant coffee, but it's better than nothing. Um, I've never made my own three-in-one, so we're gonna see if I'm making the correct amount of proportions. <laughs> we consider coffee one of our luxuries while traveling, and I'll be honest, we usually drink better stuff. We are hiking again with our friends that we climbed the previous volcano with, Jason and Hannah, who are van lifers from Canada and the UK, and are headed down to Panama, and with whom we are lucky to have met and now call friends. We knew this hike is popular, but we didn't realize how much, encountering hundreds of people on our way up. Yeah, but that view. Oh, oh we're above the clouds. Look Way at that. above the clouds. Hi there. We've been going for a little over four hours now. And I'm not going to lie, this is one of the hardest hikes I've done in memory. We're almost near the top. There's one more scrambling section, and we're hoping, fingers crossed, that it's going to be flat after that. Yeah, you have high hopes. High hopes. With the view. Guides say this will take you between four and six hours to get to the summit, but that's with minimal kit. We have everything with us and 20 kilo packs. It takes us just over the six hour mark from setting off to setting up tents. Not even at the top yet, but we are witnessing a view that can only be described as out of this world. It's been a grueling hike, not for the unprepared. And with Fuego just around the corner, already speaking to us, we were ready for it. Finally made it with a beautiful view of the volcano. Oh yeah. That's why it's a pass. It's fucked in. We are exhausted from the hike, but that's besides the point. We are planning on doing nothing for the rest of the afternoon, besides some coffee and watch the show that Fuego has decided to give us. Because why it's so high up, I didn't want to bring my scale and my grinder, so I prepped some little coffee bomb. <laughs> you put that in and it's good to go. That's it. That's amazing. Jason's manual espresso machine might be the ultimate overlander device. It's not good for that. <laughs> Verdict? That's coffee. Woo! Try it. If I have a... I'll take a little sippy. If I have one like that, I would be up all night. <laughs> yeah. It's just pure espresso, man. That's good, yeah. Oh, that's strong. <laughs> Honestly, this is better than any TV show. Watching the absolutely incredible view from this tiny campsite on the side of a volcano. Looking out over the sea of clouds was something that we will never forget. As the evening went on, Fuego started talking more and more. Already excited, we were not prepared for what we were about to see. All night, Fuego, one of the most explosive volcanoes in Central America, gave us a show to talk about for the rest of our lives. Over and over, he went on. 
and there was us, just staring into the cold and darkness for hours in anticipation for the next time Fuego would speak. With no sign of stopping, the overwhelming urge to get into our warm sleeping bag was stronger than to keep watching the show, but we'll never forget it. Verdict of the night. First of all, it was really cold, but that was all right. It was really loud because we are not the only campers here and other people decided to have a party and there was so much wind. So our tent kind of came loose as well. I don't know if the, no, it's gone. Travis is not feeling well. He's still in there. Volcano is still there. Might want to go check the sunrise. Me, feeling sick from a combination of altitude sickness and a mild dehydration, stayed sleeping for the time being while Lindsay ascended the summit of Akatenango alone. Look at that. Woo! Volcanoes, volcanoes, volcanoes. Finally heading out of the mountains for the first time in a month. We are heading to the coast, but not before some trouble. So a number of times we've had some brake issues on the mountains here in Guatemala. Today, in this wonderful parking lot here, we're going to change our front brake pads. When traveling long term, to avoid some expensive costs, you should be knowledgeable with your vehicle and how to do some basic maintenance on it also to have the proper tools and also know how to use them as well. We thought about just quickly changing the brakes, but that has not been an easy task. The brakes are so old, there is nothing left on it, and because of lots of off-roading and driving and dirt, it is really difficult to get out. So luckily, we've made a friend, Jorge, and he's been helping us out. We got one uh, brake replaced and now we are trying out the second one hopefully it comes out easier and hopefully we can get off this parking lot because i kind of don't want to spend the night here <laughs> with that minor delay behind us we are moments from the coast Gracias. We are incredibly confused because we went to the ferry station and they sent us here, which is like a military base. And we just got checked by the military. They asked our name, license plate, wrote everything down. We asked them, is this the place for the ferry? They said yes. But we are actually not really sure where we are going or what we are doing. This is not the place for the ferry on both maps and Ireland, so I don't know what's happening. Looks like there's the truck that passed us is driving onto a oh, ferry right now. Oh, okay, so we might be on the right spot. Yeah, so I'm just gonna keep going that way. Yeah. First time on a little barge, I won't lie. I was a little hesitant to put our heavy Tacoma on it, especially with another vehicle. But it all worked out, obviously. <laughs> oh, this is so stressful. <laughs> you could just hear the planks like crack and, and make all kinds of noises. Well, it's probably two trucks. 
I didn't think it would hold two trucks even. I was like, okay, we can go on our own, but that's it. It took some wiggling to get us free of the shore, however, which didn't help my initial thoughts of an overweight barge sinking and losing the truck completely. This is fun. I feel like we're on like a sightseeing boat, but then from out of the car. Still in the car. <laughs> Free at last, on route to a new destination. Guatemala has been one of the most interesting countries we've visited to date. But it's a big world. Ask us again in a year, and we might have a different answer. This country had a lot of firsts for us. Still a few more to come. We welcome the adventure. We're on the beach. <laughs> Life is pretty good here. We got a Michelita. Oh, yeah. Nice drink. Classic Latin American drink, Michelada. Love it. The Pacific Coast, with beaches full of black volcanic sand. Lindsay has an affinity with the beach, and nothing makes her feel more at home. The coast here is home to some of the best sunrises. And of course, sunsets. We drove along the coast for a few days, through every small community we came across. Free spots are limited as the resorts along this area are maximized. But once or twice we ended up in a spot that we knew would make a great home for the night. The land of Guatemala is so varied, from the coastline with unique beaches to extremely mountainous terrain, from giant lakes surrounded by volcanoes, both tropical and temperate forests. It feels like we made the right decision, but things are almost at an end for us. One last thing we have planned here in Guatemala. Our friend, a local, told us about his favorite backroads route in the area, in the shadow of the majestic Pacaya volcano. This truck, I have to admit, the quality of the Toyota really shines on trips like this. It has handled every single obstacle we've thrown at it with ease, and that's with a camper on the back, no less. With only regular maintenance, she has not let us down, and I know it's not the only vehicle in the world that can do this, I'm aware. But if we had to do it again, I'd be hesitant to pick something different. To be here in Guatemala, sometimes seeing only what very few people see, and being able to tell you about it is very special to us. I said in the beginning that Guatemala becomes a lot of people's favorite country in Central America. Did it become ours? I don't really want to answer that because it's not just about favorites, likes, or dislikes. But we really feel special about driving through the lava fields of an active volcano. Traveling through Guatemala taught us a lot about ourselves and, of course, the country itself. Some people think this lifestyle doesn't fit the norm of society, and we tell them that we'd rather do this 100 times over than one lifetime without travel. 
A wise man once said, It's a dangerous business going out your door. You step onto the road, and if you don't keep your feet, there's no knowing where you might be swept off to. Trying to fix oh. the shoes. <laughs> gotta fix them eventually. We got a, we have a mountain to climb. I need your finger. <laughs> um, what are you doing? There. There. No, that didn't work. No. It's because there's knots in here. <laughs> <laughs> 